Hi everyone, my name is Mattia Maggioli and today I'm joined by Tom Mini who developed this POC to integrate Forcepoint and Next Generation Firewall with AWS Security Hub and Azure Sentinel. This POC enables customers of Forcepoint and Next Generation Firewall to export selected logs and send them in real time either to AWS Security Hub, Azure Sentinel or both. Okay Tom, so let's start uh, with the integration with AWS. So I guess first we'll have a look into AWS Security Hub. What we can do first is have a look and see if there are any next generation firewall insights created here and there are not. Well, we haven't started. So we haven't started yet. So what <laughs> we're going to do is go to our installer. So does the customer have to provide anything before running the installation script? Uh, yes, they have to collect a few bits and pieces described in the integration guide, but the installer will actually prompt them for each separate step that they require uh, in the installation step. So it's very much automated? Very automated. So when the customer runs the installer, they'll be prompted for each individual item that is required. So the first you need to add your IP address for the SMC. The API key, which is exported from the SMC when you create a, an API client, the time that you want the service to run uh, periodically. The query size, how many log events you want to pull back at any one time. So I guess every customer will be able to define this based on the amount of logs and you know the frequency of the uploads? Yeah. So it's, it's really configurable, it's very flexible to let them do whatever they want. Yeah. Do we have a way to filter and make sure that the customer uploads into AWS only the ones that really matter? We do. So we can actually leverage the UI, the filter creator in the SMC for this, which was a nice touch by that library. And we can show, see an example of that here. Yeah where we will create a new filter on, for example, the severity. Say a client only wants to see things of, of uh, critical or high level, then they can add uh, filters and create filters that will match those criteria, for example. And the nice thing about this is that once you've created in the UI the, the filter creator, you can test it here, and you can see is this what you're looking for? If not, you can tweak it, you can, you can optimize what you want. And then once you've done that, once you've come to a point that you want to use, a uh, filter you want to use, you can export it in a way that's used by our integration. Okay, so it's very simple. The user just builds the filter with the UI that is already familiar with, and then just by copying and pasting the syntax of the filter into your own uh, component, that will do the magic. Exactly, we'll do it here as one example. Let's copy this one. The user can also customize and add multiple filters mm -hmm. so they can match multiple different types of logs. Yeah. And it's not just with the syntax, I guess, can be also with the rule IDs, so yeah. only logs that are generated from specific policies that customer already has in place will be uh, forwarded to AWS. Yeah, exactly. Cool. So the extra filters just allows them to have a default filter, which gives me everything that matches this criteria. The extra filters allows them to go, but also bring back all the ones that match these criteria as well, and it matches, simplifies the, the filter creation. Okay, so this component makes the filtering of the logs extremely simple, and extremely customizable for the user. And here is just a little helper function to allow to add extra filters or to remove them ones that have already been created there. So now the installer script is run. Now we can verify that the system is up and running and that the service, uh, periodical service is running for us also. So what happens in case there's a, I don't know, a network outage and the component is not able to upload the logs to AWS? So first of all, it will write that error to the log file contained within the integration folder. Secondly, this service will fail and will start the timer when to, to restart again after a set amount of time. Uh, then once the network has come back, it will restart and upload the logs to AWS. Cool. So the integration is also resistant in case of network issues that might impact the forwarding of logs into AWS. Yes. Cool. And you won't lose any log data because it's all stored in the SMC, so nothing, no state is stored within the integration. Okay. So now in AWS Security Hub, we can see that we've created some default insights programmatically, which gives convenient groupings, which allows you to see things by severity, by who generated them. And these are only the logs that were exported based on the filters set by the user. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so all the data in the logs were mapped into the format uh, used by AWS Security Hub. And what if you click on one of the, well, findings there? Oh, cool. So you, you actually display all the relevant fields and information of the next generation firewall logs uh, into the UI of uh, the AWS Security Hub. Yeah. And can you also see the details of the JSON, for example, of this login? That is much more fleshed out. There's a lot more information in here. 
Cool. So let's have a look now at the same data that were exported into Azure Sentinel. Okay, so here we have an overview in the Sentinel uh, workspace that's built up for our organization. As you can see, there are some logs here already. It gives you a nice overview on the last 24 hours. So we can also take a time slice and view just logs generated for the last hour. So for example, here we have one of level 10. So we can open it up and have a look and see the data inside. As you can see, we have force by destination firewall, event, event ID, severity, and also the destination and source for each of these events. We have the activity, which gives us an overview of what actually happened, and the rule tag, which is added. Cool. So does the user have to configure any other setting in order to use both cloud-based CM in case a user wants to send the same selected logs into both AWS and Azure? So on the integration side, it's as simple as saying yes when you're asked, when you're prompted for the Azure integration and also adding in one single parameter that you can receive from your Sentinel workspace. Search for the common event format, the CEF format connector. You can copy that and you can paste it in here into our installer, which I will show now. So here you can see we're being prompted to ask to, to see if we want to integrate with Azure Sentinel. If you say yes. If you want to go with AWS, just say yes. And then we'll ask you for all your other details, which we can skip for now, but these will all be provided from your SMC install when you try to configure for this integration. Cool. So this integration package allows customers to use both cloud-based CM with the extra complexity of only adding one line of code. Yep. That's okay. it. Very good. So just a quick recap of this POC. This POC enables customers of the first point and next generation firewall to filter selected logs and to export them in real time automatically into AWS Security Hub and Azure Sentinel. So, great job, Tom. Uh, thanks Thank for you. watching this video and stay tuned for more episodes. Thank you.